Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so do you ever get the feeling like um, where as a programmer, you feel like you can accomplish anything? And this actually could probably be said for people that are self-taught or people that are trying to get into the industry, those that have been in the industry for a long time. I wonder if, you know, if it's normal, but I do think it's normal actually, but th there's this common thing that I've uh, noticed throughout my now 13 years of being a, a software developer is that there, and I've said before, it sort of ebbs and flows, like motivation levels ebb, ebb and flow. Um, and I read a lot about like burnout in the industry and stuff like that. And I definitely have been burned out in the past, but I think that a real good solid day's work of programming leaves everybody feeling a little bit burned. So what I mean by that is that doing programming day in and day out, like if you've been solid coding for more than like six to seven hours in a day, I can actually feel like my brain frying. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. It's almost like being like um, ramped up on coffee or whatever. It, it's just you look at the code and it all blends in. And uh, this is modern day web development nowadays. It's like uh, I don't really know where we decided that this is the best route to take. But uh, it seemed like when we moved from like jQuery to virtual user interfaces, you know, starting with like Angular and really it goes like back to Knockout. And then like Angular and React and then Angular 2 and all the different versions of Angular and Vue. And um, now there's like SolidJS. There's all these different component-based libraries and architectures. And before that, we used to have JavaScript. And then we had like jQuery, right? And jQuery was a lot easier to write. However, jQuery itself started to look into a blended spaghetti mess as well. But I think where we are with modern day React and uh, really like any of these client side libraries, it's like we're still sort of dealing with the same like monster. It's just like a monster of, of complication where it almost feels like it doesn't need to be. So it's funny, you can go from being like, okay, I can get anything done. And then you have a couple of, you know, really rough days or whatever. And then you could be feeling like, oh, completely worthless. And some of that might be imposter syndrome or whatever. And then and then other times you're like, man, these people are damn lucky to have me working for them. You know, I can do all this stuff. But that is programming. And I really do think over the last 13 years that it not only the motivation levels ebb and, ebb and flow, but like just your your feeling of uh, worthiness and and the entire industry. So if you ask me, I know that I can actually be a programmer in most shops, I would say. I would say most shops. Um but that doesn't mean that like I'm going to be the best programmer all the time. And I think that that is normal. And I've wasted a lot of like hours and just um, time spent, you know, just thinking about, oh, I should have done this better. I should have been able to figure this out quicker or I'm never going to figure this out. And, and you know, I'm going to get exposed and everybody's going to know I don't know what I'm doing. Like, but the thing is, is like I know that that's not the case. It's really just a matter of perspective. And that perspective changes over time and day to day, sometimes hour to hour. So my point behind all that is that I do think it's absolutely normal. And when we look at programming like this, if you're even wondering what you're looking at, you're looking at TypeScript, um, material user interface components, and it's all this like embedded styling. There's like, it's like we've sort of gone full tilt. It's so weird. Like when React came out in JSX and it's like, oh, we should never, before JSX, it seemed like we, we, were all, we were always told, never mix your styles with your JavaScript. It's just not necessary. And then JSX was like, you know, we're going to take the HTML, the JavaScript, and the styles, and we're going to smash it all together. And then component-based architecture kind of took it to the extreme with all those, you know, said libraries. And then what you end up getting is you have an entire generation of programmers that are coming up in the field and that this is the way that they know how to do everything. And I'm like looking at this and I'm like thinking like, you know, Django templates, we could have made reusable components with that. Like we did back in the day, Razor templates with uh, MVC.net, C Sharp, jQuery plugins and all like, it's all just, um, it's all just development. And I don't think that it ever really gets to the point where like, you're like, oh yeah, you know what? I know how to do this and this and this, and I'm always going to know how to do this and this and this, because you're never going to just do one thing. So with web development, especially if you're full stack, you're not even just dealing with like a client side language like TypeScript or JavaScript. 
And yeah, these days you can do Node and you can write that on the server side. Like my website here is running Node.js and um, it, it, the amount of crap that's even involved in just my website here. I mean, you're looking at Apache for uh, certain processes as far as a web server, Nginx for all my static content, Node.js uh, for streaming the actual backend website and you know, streaming videos behind authentication. I'm using tools like Python to upload videos to track how long something is. I'm having to deal with, um, obviously, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's written in SAS um, as far as the CSS is concerned. There's things like web accessibility that you have to take into account. There's actual server like maintenance, uh, all the different server side setups, like when you're dealing with like setting up firewalls and how do you even install your server? How do you point your domain to your server? DNS management, HTTPS uh, certificates. I mean, the, the, the list is, it goes on and on and on. So if for one day or even for a small period of time, you're like thinking, ah, oh, you know what? This, this stuff really looks like a complete mess when I'm talking about this. Um, I get I, like to me, like uh, I don't really, I haven't used movie for very long, but I look at it and I use it. I can bring all the components in, but like even the examples, it's like are just so convoluted, some of them. And I just don't know how we actually got here. Do I think it's a bad tool? No. But do I think it makes life easier? No. And do I think we've done this before? Yes. It's like, it, it's nothing new. So my best advice is that if you are jumping into like a, uh, com you know, anything new that you're trying to learn, you, you build projects around that. That's actually what I try to do. I try to teach other people when I'm trying to learn as well. That's one of the ways that I've been able to sort of stay up to date. That can be stressful, though, because you do have to have some sort of understanding of what it is that you're trying to teach, because otherwise it's going to be pretty obvious almost immediately. So, yeah, everything's microservices these days. Uh, single page apps are still, it seems like, all the rage. Uh, and then when you're talking about something like React, it's all stitched together using 100 million different projects. And then you have your entire Node.js ecosystem, which is all consisting of millions of different projects all coming together. And the inmates are definitely running the asylum at this point. The, the JavaScript community has uh, been known for a long time to be like, pretty much the wild west shooting your guns up in the air you know what i mean that, that that's basically what this environment is and it's what it's been and it's fun for the most part it really is so i think even if you're an experienced developer and you're jumping into some of this madness just embrace it and know that like you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad days and you just you know you live life on life's terms and just take whatever's thrown at you do the best you can probably try to spend the least amount of time possible worrying about whether or not you're going to be able to actually get up to speed on something because most likely you will and you just wasted all that effort and really worrying about stuff like that is not helping you at all so that's my advice is just simply go with the flow if you're learning the code i recommend you check out my website codehawk.com my courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like plural site and udemy one of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now, professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.